This series is an archive of how I adapted my favorite Indian recipes to fit an American apartment kitchen. This means working with electric stove as opposed to gas, foregoing pressure cooker and using local produce instead of traditional Indian vegetables. We will use just seven basic Indian spices which are easily available in most supermarkets. These are chili, turmeric, coriander powder, mustard seeds, cumin seeds, garam masala and cardamom. My recipes reflect my experiences. Some I inherited from my North Indian roots and some were adopted from the various places we lived in. And then there are those born out of sheer need. I strongly believe home cooking should be permissive, personalized and most importantly forgiving. I achieved this by making my recipes simple, approachable and scalable. I hope you do find these recipes easy. No matter what we eat, I strongly abide by one Indian tradition. A meal is always enjoyed family style. Let's start with everyone's favorite, turmeric. This spice does not add any heat to the food, but has the most glorious color. According to Ayurveda, turmeric is a natural analgesic and antiseptic. To retain its medicinal properties, we never add it directly to hot oil. Chili. Ground chilies will impart more heat than flakes or whole chilies. I use a combination of chili flakes and fresh green chilies to adjust the heat in my dishes. You could also use cayenne pepper here. Cumin seeds. Cumin is heavily used in tempering as well as in roasted form. It is a very easy spice to grind, so I only purchase seeds. Mustard seeds. These seeds are most commonly used for tempering. Eastern Indian cuisine uses mustard paste. Black mustard seeds are the most popular option in Indian cooking, but feel free to replace them with yellow mustard. Before you make the substitution, I would like to highlight the differences. Black mustard is more potent and hot than its yellow counterpart. Yellow mustard also has an inherent tartness. Coriander powder. Coriander seeds have an unpleasant texture, so Indian cooks use these in crushed or powdered form. I recommend buying powder form, but you're most welcome to buy seeds and grind them at home. Cardamom. I consider this miniature cacao-like spice the vanilla of Indian cuisine. It is very versatile and an aromatic spice. One can use it to fragrance rice dishes by tempering with this spice. It is also used in a ground form in desserts. We often use it as a mouth freshener as well. Garam Masala. This is a spice mix of many aromatic spices. The word garam means hot and masala means spice blend. Now hot is not the taste uh, of heat that it gives, but rather the heat that it generates in the body. Contrary to its name, this spice blend does not make your dish taste hotter or spicier. The purpose of this spice blend is to improve the flavor and aroma of your food. Hence, this spice mix is used very stringently and often added at the end of the cooking. Let's understand how to select the right garam masala brand. I'm going to go over some of the most common spices which are added to garam masala. Let's start with the most common one, cinnamon sticks. Then we have star anise, cloves and cardamom. You will notice thus far all the spices that we have mentioned are sweet in taste. Let's look at the savory side of spices. They are black peppercorns, black cardamom, bay leaf, cumin seeds. All of these spices are dry roasted and then ground to form this dark brown powder which is known as garam masala. So when you are selecting a brand of garam masala, try to see if it has a good balance of all of these spices included in it. It may also contain nutmeg or mace. But there are a few absolute no-nos in garam masala. 
if you see those ingredients, you know for sure that it has filler spices or the wrong technique used and it's not going to be a good candidate to bring into your home. Number one, these spices need to be dry roasted. If you see oil as one of the ingredients, you know that this spice mix will not have a long shelf life. The reason is oil will start going rancid when mixed with these spices. So if you see that, that is something you're not going to go with. The second is turmeric or coriander powder. Turmeric does not belong in the spice blend because this is added right at the end of the cooking and you can't have raw turmeric at the end of the cooking. Turmeric is something we add when we have added our vegetables or lentils and give it all the time to cook with the ingredients. So again, turmeric is something we don't want in the spice blend. The third ingredient is coriander powder. Coriander powder is basically a filler spice that most spice blends use because it's the cheapest of all, which means you'll end up using more of your spice blend. So although it may look like a cheaper price when you're looking at two different brands, in reality, you'll end up going through it much sooner. So it will end up costing you the same amount. The other ingredients that are an absolute no-no in garam masala are things like onion powder, garlic powder, or ginger powder. Now that you know how to select the right garam masala, you know that when you're using just a little bit of it, you're using the right ingredients and it's only there for aroma.